This is the front side of the actual fuse relay panel, and this is the back. We'll never make any sense of this hairy mess, so let's simplify things. Here is a greatly simplified view of the fuse relay panel showing only the spots for relays. The four relays that came installed from the factory are PT main, ignition power, fuel pump, and fan one. Let's flip this panel over. Most automotive relays use the pin numbers shown. The numbers are standardized in a spec called DIN 72552. The pins that control each relay are 85 and 86. I have color coded them to show that you activate the relay with 12 volts on pin 86 and ground on pin 85. When that happens, there's an electrical connection between pins 30 and 87. Now let's see how the factory wiring was connected. The block labeled outside world represents the bundle of wires that goes into the fuse relay box. Though it's not shown, pin 30 of each relay is connected to full time 12 volts. The fuel pump relay has a control signal shown in light green and a connection to ground. The ignition power relay gets ignition key controlled 12 volts and a connection to ground. So when the key is turned on, power is routed to pin 85 of PT main and to pin 85 of fan 1. Since pin 85 of PT main is 12 volts, we know that the brown control wire activates the relay by going low. This is called an active low signal. Using the same logic, since pin 85 of fan 1 is 12 volts, we know that the blue and green control wires on pin 86 turn on the fan by going low. Pop quiz. Does anything about this wiring seem wrong? Pause the video if you want to think it over. In just a second, I'm going to give you the answer. Did you figure it out? Hopefully, the color coding of the pins helped. The control signals for the PT main and fan 1 relays are reversed. While some relays will work when connected this way, it doesn't follow the industry standard. Plug a diode relay into one of these sockets and you'll have a short circuit until the diode is destroyed. It's better to prevent this possibility, so here's what we did. At the PT main relay, Dylan disconnected the active low control signal. Then he disconnected ignition switch 12 volts. Next, he connected ignition switch 12 volts to pin 86 and connected the active low control signal to pin 85. In short, he swapped the two terminals. Same idea for the fan 1 relay. He disconnected the control signals, then disconnected ignition switch 12 volts. Then he connected ignition switch 12 volts to pin 86 and connected the control signals to pin 85. Problem solved. If a picture is worth a thousand words, what is a video worth? There's a slider that goes in with fingers like that. And it kind of locks all the relay pins in place. Is it coming already? Mm -hmm. Just like that, huh? Yeah, there's a little there's a little clip right here, which is why I need needle noses that was holding it in. But um, you know, you just squeeze it together, and then that lets it go free. Okay, so where was the lock? Tell tell us about the lock. So this is the lock right here. You just gotta squeeze it closed to let the whole thing out. Is any individual relay pin now free, or are they still locked in? Locked. Locked. Okay. Locked. Okay. Locked. Okay. So it's like a secondary lock. Right. When you're um, compressing something or whatever to pull those out, is there a tab that's getting bent that needs to be restored before you try to lock it back in place? I don't think so. I think I should... Because no. on other connectors, I did see that. No, on these it's not because there's a black plastic one that I'm pulling out of it. All right, so when you lock it in, it's as good as it ever was? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so that's good. You feel good about it? Mm hmm Now Dylan is going to pull out the plastic lock that locks all of the Mega Fuse pins in. Looks like he's starting to get some traction there. Okay, now this is the lock and we will be putting it back. On top of these, there's yep. a little cutout and in that cutout, you can depress this little uh, lever that's sticking out here yep. and push it down enough to keep it from hooking on whatever it's hooking on in there. And then you can pull it out. What was making it hard? Um, honestly, I think it was the thickness of the other screwdriver that I was using. It was pushing down on the front of this and probably pushing this even harder into the top. Gray, skip a space, vintage, skip, fuse. That one can chill there, and this one can chill right here. And now the jumper wire to the second fan relay is about to get its own little personal Series 280 tangless connector. Well, not exactly pretty, but it'll hold. Okay, so the main thing I'm worried about is the wiring part. The wiring part you're happy with? Yeah. Maybe using 10 gauge cables inside this fuse box is a bad idea. You need to do special things. If you have a fat bundle of wires, if it gets too big, it will install. It'll click into place. But if it is leaning too much forward, the pin that is supposed to slide past won't do it uh, because the whole pin kind of needs to be able to rock back within its little rectangular enclosure. Having made our modifications to this fuse box and wanting to sort of lock everything in, Dylan is reinstalling these, I don't know what they call them, I would call it a terminal lock. This is the fuse box cover. Um, among other things, it is an excellent place to label the fuses that you have put in, the relays that you have put in. We have modified this fuse box a little bit, so we need to come in here and label what's what. You've seen every change we made. Thank you for making it this far. I suggest you stop watching now. The rest of this video is basically an appendix of data sheets and catalog pages. Here is a Delphi catalog page with every part of the Fuse Relay box. Company names change and so do part numbers, but at least this information provides a starting point. This is the datasheet for Song Chuan part number 301-1C-C-R1, the relays that came installed in the Fuse relay box. Page 1 says this part number is a single pole double throw flux tight resistor relay. But notice that they also make a version with a diode instead of a resistor. It has identical shape, size, and pinout. Here on the next page, look at the connections for the diode relay. If you swap them, unlimited electric current will flow through the diode. This is commonly known as a short circuit. Comments and questions are always welcome, and they help other viewers. Thank you for watching.